Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Hyun Sik Yu from University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Uh, our, today, I present the work named Ensuring User Side Fairness in Dynamic Recommender Systems. And this is a joint work with the uh, University of Rochester and Amazon. So uh, in this paper, we focus on two aspects in the modern uh, recommender systems. The first one is dynamic uh, aspect, where new user item interaction data are continually collected over time. And uh, the model needs to um, uh, op the model needs to learn from the new data uh, to preserve the latest user preferences. And then the model can generate more accurate top case recommendation. And for fairness, uh, we focus on ensuring equal recommendation performance for advantage and disadvantage groups. And these groups are often defined by attributes like gender, race, or age. So the goal of this paper is reducing perform performance disparity while continually learning new data over time. And as a motivation, uh, I like to present some experimental research from three models. So in the left figure, uh, we can see that uh, uh, using new data over time, which are red and blue curves, has better recommendation accuracy compared to the model that does not use the new data. And in the right figure, we can see that uh, disparity persists or grows over time without the fairness regularization when we look at the red curve. And uh, we identified three challenges. Uh, the first one is distribution shifts, where new users and items uh, continually uh, appears on the system, and user preferences also changes as well. So in this setting, uh, frequent model updates are needed to keep up with the changes. Uh, which means the model needs to be time efficient. And there is also issue of non-differentiability of top K ranking metrics due to certain operation. Uh, this is a problem because it can lead to the non-differentiability of the fairness metric that we want to optimize, specifically the performance disparity. And so that cannot be directly optimized in an end-to-end -end manner by the gradient descent algorithm. So um, in this slide, I'd like to briefly talk about the previous re-ranking methods and their limitations. And then I'll talk about our method. So their idea is that given base ranking list, they want to re-rank them under the fairness constraint. So specifically, uh, they select K items from the top end base ranking list such that the performance disparity gets smaller than the predefined threshold. Uh, but there's limitations. First of all, it's time inefficient post processing. And also, it separates fairness optimization from the base recommender system's optimization, meaning that the model parameters are not affected by the fairness regularization. And also, the top end base recommendation list can be highly unfair if uh, n is small, uh, so making it hard to be more fair in the first place. So uh, in this paper, we proposed the method named FATE, which is, which is an end-to-end -end fine tuning framework with a differentiable fairness loss that continually reduces performance disparity at each time period. And this method uses the following uh, loss function, which consists, consists of the re standard recommendation loss and the fairness loss with the scaling parameter. So to briefly summarize our method, it first uses the incremental fine-tuning strategy to update the model parameters only with the new data, uh, naturally addressing the time efficiency. And also, this design choice is based on our fine-tuning versus retraining theory, uh, which shows that fine-tuning is better at handling distribution shift than retraining. And we propose the fairness loss based on the differentiable hit, which is lightweight soft ranking metric uh, addressing time efficiency and non-differentiability of the fairness metric. Uh, so in this slide, I'll brief briefly talk about the theory on fine-tuning versus retraining. And uh, what I mean by retraining here is that uh, the training strategy that uses uh, all historical data to, to update the, I mean, to, to train the model at each time period. 
So for the analysis, we use the measure of distribution shift between T and test time, uh, T subscribe TE, which is a test time. And we made the assumption that uh, the, the size of the da base data block is greater than the incremental data block sizes. And also, uh, the larger time differences leads to the larger dif distribution shifts. So for each strategy, uh, we found out the following uh, performance bound, where the blue part is related to distribution shift, and the red part is related to uh, the learning error due to the finite data, si data set size. So the key observation here is that uh, the fine tuning is less influenced by distribution shift than retraining because uh, there is this gamma factor that uh, exponentially shrinks the influence of the distribution shift to D. And also, a uh, red part implies that uh, the fine tuning's learning error could surpass the retraining. Uh, so uh, now I'll introduce our fairness loss. Uh, so recall that th the goal was creating differentiable and lightweight performance metric so that we can use it for differentiable performance disparity. So our idea is to use the differentiable version of hit operator, uh, which is the fundamental building block of many ranking metrics like recall at K. So to do that, uh, we make the certain operation, which, is, which corresponds to the permutation matrix differ differentiable. So the perm permutation matrix, uh, which is an N by N matrix, is just given by the following equation. And this equation is based on the SU, which is an unsorted scores of N candidate items for each user. And by using the dot product between the row of the permutation matrix and the interaction labels between user and items, we can define the hit at K, which indicates whether the Kth ranked item is, is user's ground truth item. And uh, what we want to do here is uh, we want to relax the permutation matrix by replacing the arg max with, uh, with the soft max. And then uh, we just replace the permutation matrix with the relaxed version of it to obtain the differentiable hit at K, uh, which is DH at K. And for efficiency in practice, uh, we use DH one, one, at one based on the sample candidate items as a surrogate of the performance metric for each user. And based on the DH, we can define the differentiable performance disparity, such as the average male DH minus average female DH. And this DPD is uh, minimized by the following fairness loss. And intuitively, this is to benefit the dis disadvantage group over the advantage group. And also, theoretically, uh, we found that there exists lambda that uh, least DPD to zero based on the competing nature between recommendation loss and the fairness loss. So this is based on the assumption that the minimizing recommendation loss alone causes unfairness. And also we avoid using absolute DPD because it, it's suboptimal due to the asymmetric gradient of loss favoring slightly favoring advantage group. Uh, for the experiments, we use two data sets. Movie lens and mob class. On um, movie lens, the sensitive attribute is gender and the dominating group is male. And on mob class, uh, the sensitive attribute is body shape and the dominating group is small. As a benchmark, we used a uh, different combination of different training strategy without and with the fairness loss. And we also compare with the existing fairness aware competitors like uh, rebanking method and uh, fair user representation generating methods. So for evaluation task, we use two, two tasks, uh, depending on the test that being used. So for example, um, the model is trained on D0, and then it's tested on D1 in task N, and, D, and the remaining data in task R. And uh, at the next time step, it goes like this, on and on. So this is the main results, uh, the trade-off between the accuracy and unfairness. So in each figure, the x-axis indicates the accuracy, and the y-axis in indicates the PD, the disparity. 
So optimal point should be the bottom right corner. And when we look at the uh, blue dot and the red dot, uh, we can see the fade reduces, effectively reduces PD without significantly compromising overall accuracy compared to when not using our fairness loss. And specifically, there is a 2% of increase for this disadvantage group and the around 3% decrease for advantage group. Uh, this is the, why there is slight um, accuracy drop. And also the fade is more fair than retraining based methods and other fairness aware competitors. And uh, this is just more fine grained uh, research of PD over time. And we can see that uh, with the fairness loss, uh, the PDs tend to remain relatively low. And uh, the table on the top is efficiency comparison. And we can see that uh, the fade is much faster than retraining based methods and other fairness aware methods. And also when we compare with the fine tune, we can see that uh, the fairness loss itself only uh, only requires the small additional computational cost. And lastly, the, the figure shows the effect of scaling parameter on the accuracy of advantage and disadvantage groups. And it shows the performance disparity gradually reduces until lambda reaches an optimal value. So as a conclusion, the, we identify the problem where PD tends to persist over time despite accuracy improvements. And also we provided theory on fine tuning versus retraining. And we proposed a new algorithm named FADE on end-to-end -end fine tuning framework with a fairness loss using lightweight differentiable heat. And uh, by experiments, we verified that FADE reduces PD without substantial accuracy compromise. Uh, so this is the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention.